In this session, we will use Dillard's Department Store Database. Dillard's was founded in 1938 and it is a US-based retailer. This database was provided to Walton College of Business by Dillard's Store. It consists of various tables with more than 128 million rows. So it is a huge data set. If you want to look at uh, more information about this data set, you can click on table, ERD and metadata. You have the list of uh, various departments and how many rows of data exist there. You can also look at uh, entity relationship diagram and you can see here one, two, three, four, five, six tables are listed along with their attributes and also relationships are indicated between two tables. Name of the table is at the top which is the entity and attributes are listed below that. So this becomes columns in the table. So first table has one, two, three, four columns and 453 rows, which means there are totally 453 Dillard stores in US. Similarly, you'll also see some other information provided like within brackets you have PK, which is primary key, FK is the foreign key. If you go above and look at systems, we are going to make use of Teradata University Network. So if you click there, you will find a lot of useful information about this uh, Teradata University Network. Now we are going to make use of Teradata SQL Assistant Web Client. So if you click on Walton College Teradata, it will take you to the login screen. You can make use of the username and password that I have provided. For default database, you should use UA underscore Dillard's. So this takes you to next screen and on the left you will see the database we were referring to UA underscore Dillard's. If you click on that and expand, you will see some more information. So if you expand tables, all the tables are listed and if you expand let's say one of the tables store info you'll also see option for columns which will provide what columns exist in that table so these are the four columns indicated in your ERD diagram now on the right side at the top you see there is a execute button once you write query here in this box you can execute them by pressing on execute button Maximum rows we have specified is 2000. At the bottom you also have some other information and whatever queries you run, it will be stored under history. You can always uh, modify, delete that. You also have answer set where whatever answer you get based on the query will be listed. While writing the query, these two commands you must enter. One is select. So select is used for selecting various columns in the table and from is used for specifying which table you are querying. So here is one example. We are trying to select two columns, store and city from store info table. We also want to specify that we only want information where state equals Ohio. So let's enter this. Although case does not matter, but we can make use of capital for commands store comma city so we want these two columns from table called store info where state equals ohio so oh so once we run or execute this query we get the answer under answer set in this area so you can see we got a table with store numbers and city where that store is located. Under history, you can see this query took about two seconds to execute and number of rows are 25. Similarly, we can say state, store and city. So now three columns and for where we are saying state like we are using a wildcard with the help of percentage so that any state whose name starts with M will be listed.
so you can see now we have a table where state store and city are listed and we have specified all states starting with m let's look at some more queries so we want to list states with delete stores select state from store info now if we simply run this it will give us list of states from this table store info looking at the erd diagram so we have state and we are pulling this data from store info so let me run this and see what happens it gives me 453 rows that's the number of rows in this table 453 so basically it is listing states where all the stores are located but there is one issue here and that is that some states are repeated many times because they may have several stores now if you want to only list in which state you have tailored stores you can specify that by using distinct so now if i run this I will only get list of states where one or more delet store exists and number of such states are 31. So this is a more compact list. We can achieve same outcome by making use of group by. We can say group by state and if we run this query that also gives us 31 rows and all those 31 states where delet store appears is listed here. Let's look at second query where we want to list states and number of delete stores. We want to show results in descending order of number of stores. We want state and count. So we want to count in how many rows state appears or same state appears. So this will give us count and we want to group by state and we also want to order by count of state and we want it in descending order so you can say desc if you do not use desc default is ascending order so lower to higher but if you want higher to lower you have to specify desc descending order if we run this we get those 31 rows and for each row we also get count of state which is number of stores we can add the name that we want to appear here so for example, if instead of count and within bracket state, if you want to say number of stores, we can simply give some space. If we use number of stores within double quotes, you can see the title changes to number of stores. You can also actually click on this column to change the order. Once I click here, now it becomes ascending order. If you click again, it becomes descending order. How many different SKUs are available at Dillard store? So SKU is primary key in SKU info table. Actually, we can get that answer just by looking at rows. Slightly over 1.5 million different SKUs exist over different Dillard stores throughout US. So SKU is nothing but stock keeping unit. So this is used as a identification for various units. So you can also get uh, same answer by querying this table. So let's do that. So we want to look at count of SKU from, so name of table is SKU info. I can collapse this history here or expand it. So let's run this and see what we get. So this is same answer as what you have here. Number four, is list quantity amount original price and selling price and we want to specify where quantity is more than 30 and we want to see results in descending order of quantity these are basically attributes in transact table so you can see quantity original price selling price amount this is t r n s a c t so i should say from TRN SACT. We also want to specify where quantity is more than 30. Quantity is more than 30. We want to order by quantity and we want descending order. So DESC. So I'm going to remove all this history just to make some more room. 
So now I'm going to run this query. It gives me six rows where quantity is more than 30. So there are basically six transactions throughout the database where quantity is more than 30. You also see what was the total amount for that transaction. So if you want to see what exactly is the definition of amount, you should look at ERD. If you go to the dictionary metadata and look at AMT, this is total amount of the transaction charged to the customer. And these are first few values. So this is numeric kind of variable. So this is the total amount. It's not that much like $21.60, but 90 items. So maybe something which is uh, very cheap. And original price was 89.5, but selling price is 0.24. So obviously these items were sold at a big discount. In fact, all of them were sold at big discount. Number five, we want total SKUs, total of amount, average of selling price and average of original price. And this is for those items that were sold at discount. So where these items are sold at discount, which means that original price is greater than selling price. So we get one row because mostly we are doing either total or counting. In fact, uh, number of SKUs that was sold at discount, it's a huge number, uh, 63 million. And also amount is quite a lot. And average selling price has been $18.78 for all those items, whereas average original price was 42.06. Obviously, these items were sold with more than 50% discount. We have looked at situations or examples where we have been pulling information or data only from one table. But sometimes we need to get data from more than one table. And we are going to look at one such example. And we do that using command called join. So in this example, we want to generate a table that indicates how many different items are carried by each Dillard's store. Sort the list alphabetically by state abbreviation. So these are the columns that we want. So we want state, store, city and count of SKUs, like number of items. So we want information on these three and also we are interested in SKU. So now these two tables are related to each other or can be joined with the help of primary and foreign key. So you can see STR info store is the primary key which becomes foreign key in the other table. So we can make use of that fact to join the tables and get the information that we need. So we are interested in state, city, store and also count of SKUs. First three columns will come from store info and then the last one comes from the other table. So because there are two tables involved, we have to be very specific like from which table each of these columns are coming from. So we can make use of str info dot just before the column name. So we can add that to specify where this is coming from. SKU you can see comes from SKST info and we make use of the command called inner join where we specify the second table and we join these tables on the primary and the foreign key. So the first one is str info dot store so that's the common variable which equals SKST info dot store. So in this table, we want these columns and we also want to sort the list alphabetically by state. Note that we want to group this outcome by state, city and store. So we should include that here. And we want to order by state. So if we run this, we should get the outcome we are interested in. 
So we get 357 rows which includes various stores in different cities and different states and for each store we also have count of SKUs. We could have achieved same thing by making use of alias or some kind of nickname for the tables. How does that help? So suppose I call this table as simply S. So just space and if you put S then henceforth this table will be called with this name S and suppose I use maybe K for the second table then I do not need to write whole table name I can just say S dot state. So if you run this you will again get 357 rows. So basically we are doing same thing maybe more efficiently. So you get same outcome. So these were some examples with the help of which you can run queries and the number of commands you see in SQL are very limited, uh, very few. So it is not that complicated and for more examples as I mentioned earlier you can go under systems and Teradata University Network and if you look at this file for example you have some more examples. So for example here they are pulling some data based on two tables and one new thing you may see here is if you want to order by a particular column like third column so instead of saying total sales you can also simply say three that will also do the same thing. So you can make use of this also as a good resource.